Welcome to the award-winning Superhuman Academy podcast, where we interview extraordinary people to give you the skills and strategies to overcome the impossible. And now, here's your host, Jonathan Levy. Before we get started, I want to ask you a question. Every single week, we bring you these episodes full of dozens of skills, habits, routines, and strategies to help you become more superhuman. Now, be honest. What percentage of those things are you actually able to implement in your life? Of course not. You need the accountability and community. And that's why in 2018, I launched the Becoming Superhuman Mastermind. Every month as a community, we invite a world-renowned expert in to lead a one-month challenge. Past challenges have included environmental design with Benjamin Hardy, hacking your sleep with Nick Littlehales, who is Cristiano Ronaldo's own sleep coach, and meditation with Muse founder Ariel Garten. On top of that, we send out a care package with all the gear and goodies you need to complete that month's challenge. And best of all, as a member, you get exclusive discounts to all kinds of events, courses, supplements, and gear. And those discounts alone are worth more than your entire membership. Look, as a listener, of this podcast, we know that you stand to benefit a great deal from being in the group, but also that you stand to contribute a lot. And that's why we're offering 50% off your first month. To join, visit superhuman.blog slash mastermind today. This episode is brought to you by Ambronite. Ambronite's plant-based meal replacement shakes are made of 100% real foods. They have everything you need and contain zero preservatives, GMOs, or artificial BS. I recently got a shipment of Ambronite, and I have to say I am pretty impressed. The product blends ridiculously well. It tastes great, not too sweet, and not like grass clippings either. And it actually keeps me satiated for four plus hours. So this is one product that I will be carrying in my travel bag, putting in my desks, and placing in my kitchen cabinet. Now, to go ahead and get 10% off of Ambronite's complete meal and balanced meal shakes, visit ambronite.com slash superhuman. And make sure to use the coupon code superhuman at checkout. That's A-M-B-R-O-N-I-T-E dot com slash superhuman. And use coupon code superhuman at checkout. Greetings, super friends, and welcome, welcome to this week's episode. You guys, today we have a special treat because we are joined by Melina Harrison. She is one of the most successful entrepreneurs that I know, a fellow Genius Network member, and I refer to her as the queen of essential oils. Over the last almost decade, Melina has onboarded and taught over 260 thousand people about the health benefits of essential oils. In the process, she has built a family of four kids and built a multi-million dollar business helping people use essential oils as natural alternatives to many different nutritional supplements, medications, and many, many other things. We have to be careful not to make any health claims around essential oils. But I wanted to learn about this entire fascinating world because I see that there's something here. More and more, I hear about essential oils as alternatives, as treatments, as solutions for a lot of different things, whether that be anxiety or fever. And I wanted to learn more. This is something I know very, very little about. Over the course of the last hour, Melina has taught me so much and my mind is completely blown that I am ordering a package, a care package from Melina to arrive on my doorstep so I can start playing around with some of these things in my own household and seeing how they can replace some of the things that I use as health products, as self-care and as everything else. Melina, by the way, has been featured on Reinventing Healthcare as well as Leadership Magazine. She's been featured in the book, The Power of Essential Oils and many, many other places. By the way, if you guys want to support the show, I want to encourage you to use the link in the blog post of this episode at superhuman.blog should you decide to pick up any health supplements, products, or essential oils. It would really do us a solid and Melina as well, and we really, really appreciate it. So without any further ado, Melina Harrison. Melina, 
welcome. I'm so glad to finally get you on the show. You're a very busy woman. Oh, I'm really excited to be here. I've loved listening to your podcast and feel really honored to be a part of it today. Well, I am so touched to have you here because this is something that I really, really want to learn about. My wife is uh, like really into essential oils. She was so stoked when I brought home that information packet that you gave me at Genius Network. So I need to learn more and I need to get on this trend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> How did you become the internet essential oil queen? Like, Tell the audience your story and how you got into all this. So to be honest, I was raised by hippies. So when I was growing up, everything was herbs, cayenne, garlic tea, much of which I wasn't a huge fan of. (laughs) And a lot of it took a lot of time preparing tinctures and that kind of thing. And as I grew up into this modern world, we're very busy and life is not quite... I guess, cohesive for us to be mixing all of these herbs and everything else. But I've always been really interested in how the body works, how the mind works. So I became a massage therapist and thought that that was going to pay my way through school to get a PhD in psychology, which I never ended up doing because I loved body work so much. And in that process and working in the spa industry, I was exposed to a lot of essential oils and I'd heard so many great things, but I found the results to be kind of hit and miss. And in fact, a lot of times, because there's such a lack of regulation, the quality I found would sometimes give me headaches because there was synthetic things in there or would cause my clients to have reactions on their skin. And so I wasn't really a fan until almost 10 years ago, I had noticed a slight temperature on my one-year-old baby. And I had just purchased some peppermint from a friend of mine that she had recommended. And I knew that that was cooling. So I just diluted a drop and put it on the back of his head. And within about two minutes, his body temperature cooled right down. And I thought, well, this is really convenient and very quick. What else can these oils do? And I started really diving into the science and the research of how they work, what they do in the body. And then I spent the last nine years or so traveling around the world, educating people from all different walks of life on how they can implement these essential oils into their life. And what I really love about them is they're very potent and they're very easy to use. Their shelf life is so long. So I, a lot of times I'll buy fresh herbs for my cooking and things like that. And (laughs) unless it's something that I have planted, there's really a very low shelf life on it. So that's what I really loved about essential oils is how convenient and easy to use they are and how powerful and safe they are when you use them correctly. Okay, so I have so many questions. But first, I want to ask you to humble brag a little bit because you are, (laughs) for lack of a better word, absolutely crushing it. Do you actually have a statistic on how many essential oils are sold because of you and people that you've trained every year? Oh, I'm not sure. I mean, I do have a clientele base of 260,000 families that I work with. So, but I'm I'm not sure statistically. I've done trainings all over the world and uh, I've worked with some, you know, doctors. I work with a lot of top spas in the nation and helping them implement them into their protocols. I've worked with nurses, midwives, entrepreneurs are one of my favorite aspects because entrepreneurs are so busy, but they want shortcuts and they want things that are safe. And they generally care about their health because you're the million dollar racehorse, right? You have to take good care of your body if you want to be producing those great results and elevating your business. I love that. And the part that I want to point out to the audience, just so you guys get an idea of how incredibly successful this business is, I hung out with you three months ago, and that number was 250,000. So in the last three months, you have onboarded 10,000 families to learn about essential oils and their benefits. Yeah, we're probably at 265. I just (laughs) rounded down. (laughs) This blows my mind. And it's all through education. I mean, it's it's education-based marketing. Now, give me the pitch on essential oils, right? Because We've had everyone on every side of the spectrum from people who are completely anti-pharma on the show to people talking about the benefits of pharma. Why are essential oils special in our kind of healthcare practice, self-care practice? Yeah, essential oils, they're basically what they are. it's It's just a part of the plant. Sometimes it's the roots, the seeds, the leaf. 
And there, it's a very volatile liquid that's derived from those plants. So when we're looking at, like, even if you look at medicines today, modern medicine, most of it comes from the same compounds that are found in essential oils. And they take them and synthetically reproduce them, obviously, so they can be patented. So there's really, really powerful compounds in these essential oils. And they're, if, even if you compare them to plant medicine, they're a lot more potent because they're the very volatile liquid. So that peppermint that I just talked about that I'd used with, you know, cooling the body, one drop of peppermint would be equivalent to 28 cups of peppermint tea. They're really potent and go a long way. They're very powerful that way. And what I also love about them is because they are very complex. So let's say that we're looking at uh, an antibacterial essential oil. They actually communicate with the cell functions, and they're able to identify the difference between healthy bacteria and bad bacteria. And your healthy bacteria is what makes up a majority of your immune system, right? Right in that gut health. And so we definitely want healthy bacteria to stay there. It's the bad bacteria that we want to kind of get rid of if there's an overgrowth of, of bacteria, we've got a bacterial infection. And essential oils are up to 800 compounds. So your body doesn't become immune to them. Whereas you might look at some other medications that you would get from, you know, like get a prescription for. They have generally four to six compounds. So what usually happens in that case is you have to take something for a 10-day period that wipes out all of the bacteria. Otherwise, you, your body will become immune to it. And we've got these like super bugs now that are one of the leading causes of death is these hospital-induced infections because we've got super bugs because we've had so many things that are inhibiting the healthy bacteria in our body. So I really, really love that they're complex. They actually go through multiple pathways in the body. So an essential oil, like let's say, for example, the peppermint that I mentioned, you could use that for what I talked about, like cooling the body on hot summer days. I put it in a spray bottle and I spray it on, you know, my family or myself, if we're out at the beach or the lake, it's just a really great way to keep yourself cooled down. But it's also fantastic for mental clarity. They've done lots of different research on its ability to help you retain information, which you might be interested in with, with all of the memory function that you study. It also helps with increasing your energy as well as any type of respiratory support, any type of digestive support. So it can be, they're very versatile. They can do a lot more than just one thing. And that's to me, very, very empowering. And when you can have them, like I've got a cabinet in my kitchen with essential oils. I've got one in my bedroom, one in the bathroom, because I use them in my you know daily shower routine and with my skincare. Each of my children has a kit in their own room and they've got, they all have their specific favorites for whatever they're working with. And I just find them to be very simple to use, very effective, very safe, and very comprehensive. Amazing. So if I'm understanding it correctly, the essential oil movement is a lot like the paleo movement, except it's using the essence of plants. It's kind of like paleo self-care, if you will, using the <laughs> plants that we evolved with, except using a hyper purified kind of like strengthened version of them. Yeah, definitely. I've never heard it compared that way, but I would say that's true. And I believe the things that are on this earth that your body can actually recognize as something that it knows what to do with makes a huge difference in your body's ability to perform the functions it's supposed to be functioning with, right? I think that currently we have so many... So even in our body care products, I really like to replace any toxic things with non-toxic products. And essential oils can be a great way that you can do that. But many people don't even think of that. And they're putting on things in their, you know, their shampoo and conditioner and their body lotions and scrubs that are known petrochemicals. Like we're not, <laughs> there's no discussion about whether they're, they're toxic or not, but we justify it saying that it's at a safe level of toxicity. And so we continue to use that and consume it in our foods and a lot of the products that we're utilizing every day. I personally think this is what is causing such a rise in autoimmune disorders because we're overwhelming our body with things that we're not meant to be in or on our body. And what the essential oils can do is they help your cells process things, even with, you know, normal like neurotransmitters and normal hormone function, your body can actually do things that help 
produce that or trigger the normal functions in the body, if that makes sense. It totally makes sense. And I'm just thinking back, you know, I'm all about the plant medicine. And I've, I think I've realized, like, I grew up, everyone knows my story, but I grew up using Ritalin to try and get through school. And I've realized over the years, I mean, like, we had Taro Isocalpula on the show early on. And I realized, holy crap, I can take coffee, which is a naturally occurring thing, and mix it with mushrooms, you know, Four Sigmatics, Lion's Mane. And it's more effective than Ritalin and it's completely natural and I can drink it every single day and it won't cause me to lose weight. And it's amazing to me. I had a, uh, a massive anxiety attack a few months ago about wedding planning mixed with financial stuff, mixed with tax stuff. It just all hit at once. And someone told me, you know, drink two cups of chamomile tea. And I was like, come on, like I need clonopan. And actually <laughs> works better than the clonopan. And then I researched and read that. And there's actually a study where they compared placebo effect, clonopan, and two cups of chamomile tea. And wouldn't you know it, the chamomile tea actually reduced visible signs of anxiety more. So I'm totally on board with this. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, there's a lot of research with different things. And anxiety is one that... There's a lot of different essential oils you could use for that. But one of my favorites would, have, would probably be lavender. And I mean, lavender, there's studies where just three minutes of lavender breathed in will help relax and help you perform. Let's see, the study said that it helps people perform math computations faster and more accurately. Rosemary can also help with alertness and help complete math computations faster. Not necessarily more accurately, though. It was the lavender that's been studied for that. It's great for... You know, it's been studied for sleep concerns and showing that there's a lower level of depression. So all of these things, it's really amazing how the essential oils can go right into the body. And just to give you an idea of how it works is we have like the cellular membrane, right? And it has this double role of keeping unwanted intruders out while still being permeable for things that it needs to have in. So there's a lot of substances that can't penetrate that cellular membrane, anything that's like water soluble or synthetic, for example. And essential oils, though, they penetrate that cell within seconds. There's been blood tests done where it takes about 20 seconds to see the essential oils in the blood. And it takes about 15 to 20 minutes for it to get into all of the tissue of the body, but it's very fast acting. And this is because it's lipid soluble. It's also very small in molecular structure and the body recognizes it. So it goes right directly into the blood. Uh, there's a couple of different ways that you use essential oils if if you're interested in that aspect. <laughs> I do that. I'm holding off on that question. Okay. I will say like, I'm completely convinced, but I just realized also if someone isn't convinced, I saw a study the other day that I thought was fascinating. And it was uh, essentially proving that 70% of any medications effect, whether synthetic or natural or, you know, healing or Reiki or anything, any medical treatment, 70% of the result can be attributed to placebo effect. So what I'm thinking as you're speaking is like, okay, maybe it, it works as well, you know, as people believe, maybe it doesn't. But if 70% of whatever you take, whether it's some nasty SSRR, SSRI pharmaceutical or essential oil, if 70% of it is going to be placebo effect, then why not opt for the natural placebo? You know what I mean? That's not going to harm your body that's been around in nature for millions of years. You know, it's like, it's just safer. Yeah. Well, and I, a lot of the studies that I read, I like to look at the comparison to placebo effects. So for example, there was a study done for on sleep and we used natural essential oils for that. And then there was also a placebo group and some other sleep products that were being compared. And they showed that not only did, it, did the essential oils help with falling asleep, it also helped with balance and coordination upon waking, uh, an easier time waking up, more alertness after being woken up compared to the placebo or the washout periods where they weren't using anything. It also showed with their sleep diaries that they had better test scores when the participants were taking the essential oils than when they were taking the placebo. I do think that there is, your mind is powerful. So when you believe something, I do think placebo can be a very strong, accurate effect. But I also like looking at research that is compared against a placebo. And 100%. from the research I've seen, the essential oils are a lot more effective. 
A hundred percent. So what can I treat with this? Or I mean, I guess the better question is what can't I, but what are some of the most common things that you see and treat people for? So I'm not a medical doctor, so I don't, I can't technically treat people. I educate people on the power of what essential oils can do. And so Really, what I help them do is create a better working system. So there's a lot of different things we can really look at. So inflammation, for example, inflammation is the root of all disease. And there's a lot of essential oils that can help create a more healthy inflammatory response in the body, like Frankincense is one of my favorites for that. And, you know, not only it's not like a COX-2 inhibitor where you're taking it for specific inflammation in a joint, it's really an inflammatory response all over in the body. So you want to look at healthy inflammatory response in the tissues, in the liver, in the kidneys, in, in all of the body. And so that's really, really a good way to do that. Also, oregano, it is uh, high in carbosol, and it really has been shown to decrease increase the levels of those key immune system inflammatory particles called cytokines. So they're like this protein that act as a messenger for the immune system. So like I said, inflammation is a good response when it's not overused, but we have so much inflammation in our body. And sometimes that communication between the body and the immune system has really chronic inflammation happening, which can cause a lot of adverse effects in the body. So like an intense bout of exercise, we're going to we're going to trigger normal inflammation, right? We want to help assist the body's normal immune function so that we don't have such a high reaction to some of these stressors. Even when we're eating foods and high in polyunsaturated fats, like red meats and things, we can really increase that inflammation. So just helping create a healthy inflammatory response. There's things that we can do for the immune system. So there's some essential oils that are, and I guess to keep things a little bit simplified, it's not necessarily a task of learning which essential oils you use for which things. I just like to learn what properties an essential oil has. So for example, cinnamon is really great for regulating blood sugar levels. And so that can help with that. It also helps speed your metabolism. It also helps boost your immune system. And so those are things that can really help. Some essential oils are antispasmatic. Some are analgesic. So they're really good for any type of pain. Some are antibacterial. Some are antiviral. And there's been a lot of studies. There's a study actually on PubMed done at the University of Oklahoma under Dr. Wu that studied oils like cinnamon, rosemary, eucalyptus, I think clove, and showed them to inhibit the growth of the swine flu. So with viruses. Now, what's interesting about viruses is they need a DNA host. So they don't grow on the outside of your cell like a bacteria does. So they're harder to reach. That's why a lot of times if you have a viral infection, really your option is to drink a lot of liquids and wait it out, right? <laughs> So with these essential oils, they permeate that cell and they don't actually kill the virus. There's, I've heard that, but that's not accurate. They stop the virus from reproducing because the virus uses your, it gets into your DNA and it uses your cells to reproduce. What it does is it just stops that reproduction of the virus in the cells. So it's really powerful that way what we can do. I like to use essential oils more as a proactive, keep your immune system healthy, keep you know your body functioning at its optimal level, because I think it's a lot better to prepare and prevent than repair and repent and wait until we're falling apart, right? So I don't know if that answered your question, but we can use it for a lot of variations. I do have five basic areas that I work with, with entrepreneurs specifically, entrepreneurs have a variety of things depending on their specific circumstances. But there's five main hacks that I like to use with them because most every entrepreneur struggles with sleep, whether they're working too long, they're working in the late hours of the night, they're waking up early, or whether they're actually going to bed at a reasonable hour, but their brain is not shutting off. <laughs> they're just, they've got ideas coming. And so we work with that with a lot of different essential oils that can be very calming to the central nervous system that can work with the brain. There are also essential oils that do cross the blood brain barrier. I failed to mention that before. And that's really powerful that we can actually 
cross that blood brain barrier. Not all essential oils do, but many do. And it's thought that it's the terpenes that are contained in essential oils do that, as well as um, monoterpenes that essential oils have because they're really, they're structurally smaller and they can penetrate that blood brain barriers to really work with the central nervous system and a lot of the brain functions. And so we can use essential oils powerfully for that with sleep, also with mental clarity and focus. So often we have projects and we're trying to get into that state of flow, but we have a hard time concentrating. And so we can affect that aspect for people in their business to help with a lot better focus and concentration. There's You want to use grounding oils, things like Hawaiian sandalwood, frankincense, chamomile that you mentioned. Chamomile is also great for that. And then immune function. I think this is a huge area where... A lot of times you're traveling a lot, you're presenting a lot, you're in meetings and shaking hands and, you know, there's all of the germs. You know that if somebody sneezes, it spreads about a 15 foot radius and lingers for about 12 minutes. So (laughs) it kind of, the germs can spread, right? And so we want to just do the things that boost the immune system. So those things don't affect you, especially if you're traveling in a plane that's having that recycled air, a lot of different germs in there. And then you're changing time zones, jet lag, lack of sleep. A lot of times we're not eating the correct ways. So there's a lot we can do with essential oils to make sure that any of the pathogens that are coming in are not affecting the cells. We look at emotions. I think that emotions are one of the key aspects of happiness. So we, we definitely want to look at emotions and how they, cause they affect the rest of our processes. Right. And so there's essential oils that work with the brain and emotionally it kind of sounds hokey to some people that you can breathe in an essential oil and it can change your body's physiology. But what happens is you breathe that in and it goes through your limbic system and the part of your brain that regulates your moods. It also regulates your memory. That's how come you can smell something and have a really vivid memory of something 12 years ago when, you know, it smelled like your the peppermint that your grandma put in her cookies or whatever. <laughs> and it regulates uh, your hormone production. I actually think this is one of the most powerful selling points on essential oils because they say that you can't change your spouse, but hello, you can change their mood. <laughs> You're in the newlywed phase still, so you probably don't ever need to do that. Oh, never. Only four days a month. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then energy too. So energy levels, there's a lot that we can do that help with energy levels, especially in the afternoon where we tend to get that lag. Most people, I know everybody has different points of energy, but for what I've seen usually around one or two o'clock, we need another energy boost. And a lot of times people are turning to energy drinks or coffee and peppermint can just help with that. Um, Cinnamon, lemon, any of your citrus oils are going to be mood elevators. And that's what's pretty cool about them is there's just different categories where your citrus oils are going to be stimulating. They're going to be uplifting. They're going to be, they actually... They're calming in a sense because they're calming to the central nervous system, but they're also uplifting to the mood. And sometimes people think uplifting means hyper and calm means fatigued. (laughs) That's not how it works. And then your florals are going to be really anti-inflammatory. They're going to be anti-spasmatic. They're going to be great for analgesic properties, antiviral. So will your herbs. Herbs are going to be very antiviral as well, antifungal, antibacterial, antiparasitic. So anytime you're trying to work with that kind of stuff, then those will be really helpful. If you're looking more for like mood, all of the roots. So roots would be like vetiver or spikenard. Those are really calming, grounding. They, they're very sedative and help with those feelings that of anxiousness. Does that make sense? Fascinating. So there's a lot to learn here. Like I thought it was going to be much simpler, right? Like, oh, lavender for anxiety. For depression, you want this. For fever, you want peppermint. There's actually a a lot to learn here for people who want to use these correctly. And I I noted at the beginning of the interview, you said, you know, they're very effective, asterisk, if used correctly. All right, super friends. I just want to take a quick break here really quickly to talk about the single most important improvement and hack that you can make to feel superhuman, a hack that almost every single guest mentions on the show. Do you know what it is? 
It's sleep. We need to be getting really, really good, high-quality sleep, or we run the risk of depression, diabetes, obesity, cardiovascular disease, and many, many more things. But one of the biggest problems around getting good sleep is temperature. It is really tough to get good sleep if you're too hot or too cold. And that's why I want to tell you about the Pod by 8 Sleep. It's a high-tech bed designed specifically to help you achieve optimal sleep fitness. And it was developed by leading sleep researchers after tracking 43 million hours of sleep. So it combines dynamic temperature regulation and sleep tracking to enhance your rest and recovery. It learns your sleep habits and adjusts the temperatures automatically for both you and your mate. It is a crazy, comfortable bed that helps you sleep longer and deeper so you wake up refreshed and ready to take on the world as a superhuman. Now, you can try the pod for 100 nights, and if you don't absolutely love it, they'll actually refund your purchase and arrange a free pickup. So, for a limited time, you can get $150 off your purchase when you go to 8sleep.com super. That's E-I-G-H-T sleep dot com slash super. All right, let's get back to the show. How do people go about starting here? I mean, is there such a thing as a starter kit? Is there somewhere where people should go to learn things about this? I feel like people could dive in, get really excited, do it wrong and go, okay, this isn't for me. So it's hard to do them really wrong. It's really the matter of quality that you want to look at. And so what people don't understand is just like there's different types of tomatoes and there's different species of bananas and apples. People don't realize that it's the same when we're looking at lavender. There's a lot of different species of lavender. There's 80 different species of basil. So if you're looking for something that's antibacterial, basil is great, but there's 80 different species. Or camphor, for example, camphor is a plant that's really great for analgesic. It's good for pain. It's good for like muscle spasms. And I use it for a lot of muscle tension and soreness. However, there's different types of camphor. So brown and yellow camphor have a compound called saffron, which is actually toxic. You really don't want to use that. But white camphor doesn't have that compound, so it's really safe and effective. So sometimes people get confused thinking that a lavender is lavender and peppermint is peppermint and frankincense is frankincense when it's really not. And so we really want to look at the species that we're working with. Also, sometimes people think if something's organic or... The word natural is very confusing in marketing because really, what does that even mean sometimes? <laughs> but it, just because something is organic or natural doesn't mean it's good for you. Nobody wants organic poison oak, right? It's just there's some plants that probably shouldn't be used in the body in certain ways. So we want to look at quality. So that's the main thing. On my website, Well-Oiled Entrepreneur, I do have a wonderful starter kit that has the basic of you know, a grounding blend that helps with anxiety and helps with like when you've got just a lot of the emotional functions, there's lavender that's going to help with, you know, sleep, with mood. Also, lavender is really great for the skin. So any type of like sunburn or burns, lavender is very soothing, bug bites, bee stings. It's just, it's soothing all things to the skin. Same with tea tree oil is very good for skin concerns. Then I have an immune boosting blend there that I talked about with the PubMed study. There's a massaging blend that helps with increasing the circulation in the body and calming muscle tissue also as well as like a pain blend that helps with anti-inflammatory response. Um, there's citrus oil in there, and then there's the peppermint. And so that's a really good starter kit that people can utilize. I also have, I do consultations for people. And I think we can offer a free consultation for anybody on this podcast, if you're interested. So that's a $250 value, because that way we can kind of create something customized based on like how they would want to utilize it according to what their circumstances are. But yeah, you definitely want to look at the species. You also want to look at the sourcing of the plants. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I didn't understand when I was looking at essential oils and using a variety of them, they were so inconsistent. And what I started to realize is really how the plant is sourced. It's going to be very different. So for example, I was in the Philippines a couple of years ago and I had a mango 
And at the time, I was living in Las Vegas, Nevada. The mangoes in Nevada are not the same as the mangoes in the Philippines, right? When the climate and soil is meant to grow that plant, you're going to have a higher quality plant and a higher quality oil. So I only use indigenously sourced essential oils where they're, it helps with the compounds being at the correct levels that they need to be for you to get the proper response from them. And then we also want to look at harvesting process of essential oils because let's say that you picked two oranges from the same exact tree and one you picked when it was ripe and one you picked when it was green and set it on the counter until it was ripe. Those are going to be different as well. So we want to look at the sourcing content and then obviously the distillation process. Most essential oils now are steam distilled, which is a really great way to distill essential oils. And then a lot of the citrus oils are just cold pressed from the rind. I think at this point, any therapeutic grade of essential oil will be distilled those two ways. We want to stay away from anything that's using solvents or, or that type of distillation because that can really interfere with, with the compounds. But they really generally are a lot simpler than what they're sounding like. They're very powerful and they're very complex in their ability, but it is difficult to go wrong if you're using common sense. You don't want to, you know, put oils in your eyes or in any, you know, there's different things that you want to just use common sense with and you want to use safe amounts. You want to use diluting. So the, the main mistake I see people make is that they won't dilute an essential oil. And so a lot of it will actually evaporate and flash off instead of being absorbed into the skin. So you want to use a natural carrier oil like jojoba, grapeseed, almond oil, coconut oil is really great. That's also what you'd want to use if you ever had an experience with essential oil that you didn't want. So for example, if you did get some in your eye, then you wouldn't put water on it because water and oil don't mix. You would put a carrier oil on it to kind of take, diffuse that. Okay, a lot of info there, really helpful info as well. So I was surprised that you said, you know, any therapeutic grade will work because I kind of sent a lot of times, like whatever you find down at the local CVS is not good stuff. Like people always ask me, what magnesium should I take? And I'm like, not the one at GNC or maybe GNC, but not the one at Lucky or CVS because yeah. that's going to be the right quality grade. I know you work specifically with one brand that you really, really trust. Which one is that? And I guess we'll set people up so that they can check it out. We'll link them all to the different places. But what's what are brands that people can trust? Yeah, so with their therapeutic grade, I said that any of them would mostly be distilled with uh, steam distillation or cold press. However, I don't think most of them are safe. <laughs> Other than sometimes they smell nice. So yeah, I use a line called doTERRA essential oils. And they've been around for about 10 years. They're a multi-billion dollar company. They were the largest essential oil company in the world within about three years. And it's because their commitment to quality, I've been able to travel with the owners of that company to places like Haiti, where we source the vetiver and see the process of sourcing there. I've gone to Bulgaria to visit where they source Melissa and lavender. And I've gone to Kenya with them and seen the farming process there. And not only are they very committed to the sourcing process and the quality of oils, they're actually very committed to the co-impact sourcing for the areas that they're sourcing from. Because a lot of these places like Guatemala, where we source cardamom, they're really non-industrialized and a lot of them struggle with day-to-day -day life. And so we're able to, on the mission trips that I went with them, we went on humanitarian trips with them to not only visit the farms and see the process that's going into that and see the distillation process, which actually varies quite a bit depending on what the plant is. We we're able to see the humanitarian work that is done as well. And they put so much back into the communities and the farmers. And because of this, they have a 96% exclusivity with the essential oils because everybody wants to source with doTERRA because they get proper pay, they get proper treatment. You know, I've seen them put in schools, put in hospitals. I actually was just in Brazil down in the Amazon where we source our copaiba, which is a wonderful essential oil. It's an endocannabinoid. So it can be used for a lot of things in that endocannabinoid system. And you know, we watch them tap the trees to get the oil out of the trees. It's really, really cool to watch. And I'm very impressed with the testing process that goes into place, as well as, you know, making sure that it's a third party testing, not in-house testing, which many companies do. And 
to me, there's a little bit of a conflict of interest if you're testing your own products. Obviously, you should test them as well, but there needs to be some third-party validation there for me to feel comfortable. And so I do think that that makes a big difference. And everything is sourced indigenous as well with this line. Really, really cool. And like I said, you keep telling me that I got to get set up with this whole thing and join this revolution. So we're going to get people a link at superhuman.blog where they can check out and we'll get some kits organized for them. And Dimitris is like cursing my name right now because he's in charge of making sure that everything that I promise (laughs) on the podcast actually goes into the podcast episodes and he does a phenomenal job. So thank you, Dimitris, for making sure that all the links that I promise are going to be in there. Now, I find that people who are as passionate as you are about health well, they do more than just one or two things. So what are some of the things that you do to perform at your highest level as an entrepreneur, as a parent, as a human being? So the main thing is I don't put things in my body that my body doesn't recognize. <laughs> you only get one body in your lifetime. So, you know, and that's that's really the vehicle that drives you through life. So in your business relationships and my business capabilities, I coach thousands of thousands of people on their business practices. I coach thousands of people on their health practices. So I have to make sure that I'm showing up as my best self. And the main thing that I ensure is that in my home we don't have things that are really not meant to be consumed or utilized. I'm a big fan of float tanks. Um, have you done those? I have. I did. It, I've done it a few times, many times. I do it sometimes when I come visit Joe. Oh yeah. We rest in Tempe, and we actually have had a couple people on the show who make them. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So I have never done it in Arizona while at Genius Network, but I had experienced it a couple times, and I'll be honest, the first time. I didn't really enjoy it. It was I was a little too wiggly. It was kind of just to have darkness and nothing <laughs> with that deprivation tank. I got a little bit bored and I didn't quite get it. And then the second time I was like able to unleash a little bit more creativity instead of just getting fidgety. And now I do that on a regular basis. And I think that's where I do some of my best thinking when I can just lay there and relax and let your body completely go into the float tank. So I'm a big fan of float tanks. Meditation is something that i am newly gotten into about two years ago. And I still prefer guided meditations. For some reason, they work better for me. And I'm a big fan of affirmations. I've made affirmation lists. And those really help me with putting my state of mind to where I want it to be. And then I really am a fan of anything that helps with sleep. I think that sleep has one of the largest impacts on our health. And it's really been kind of ignored as opposed to all of the other things like exercise and nutrition. So I think anything that helps me sleep better, blue light blockers, I have alarms on my phone that tell me it's bedtime. <laughs> I, have, I have settings on my phone that don't disturb me. And those are really, really helpful. I would say... Listening to your podcast is another thing that has really kind of transformed my focus in areas of my life that I might not have known that I could really be up-leveling. So that's been really helpful. And then obviously, I have a daily routine of essential oils. Yeah. So walk us through your daily essential oil routine. So I use essential oils in the shower. And I really like anything that helps with elevating. I shower in the morning. So usually, I'll take my dog for a run. And I like oils like peppermint that help me have energy. Then in the shower, I really like putting a couple drops of eucalyptus on the bottom of the floor. Then I use oils like frankincense or helichrysum on my skincare and on my face. During my breakfast time, I usually take some oils internally actually, which normally I wouldn't suggest, but with this line, internal use is very effective. And most essential oils, I mean, many foods have essential oils in them already. So if they are if they're sourced correctly, then they can be great taken internally. So I do that for some energy and for some cellular repair. And then in the afternoon, I really like to use a blend that has some ling ling and patchouli and peppermint in it to help with my mental clarity and my focus. In the evening, I always will use like a lavender chamomile sandalwood, sometimes something that's grounding. And I diffuse that through my home and it really helps put me into that state of rest. And then on a daily basis, we use oils like cinnamon or rosemary, clove. Clove is one of the highest antioxidant essential oils. So it has one, just one drop would have as 
many antioxidants as 40 pounds of carrots. So that's going to help with healthy cell regeneration. And we use that daily on everybody in our house as we're leaving the house. And then, you know, at night when we're getting ready for bed, just to keep our immune system strong. And that's kind of like, I have a basic routine. Supplements are another really important thing. I think nutritional supplements, it doesn't matter how healthy you're eating. It's hard to get the right amount of all of the nutrition that we need. So I take a whole food matrix supplement that is really phenomenal, increases energy levels and has really helped with areas of fatigue in my body where I, I might have back pain or knee pain if I go a couple days without using it. But when I take my supplements regularly, then I notice I don't have any of those issues. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited about this. I can't wait to try this stuff. I know my wife likes to diffuse stuff throughout the house, but I mean, we, I think she's mostly on the, this smells nice and it kind of makes me feel relaxed. <laughs> and I feel like I sent her this episode, it's like pulling teeth to get her to listen to these episodes. That's a good starting point. Exactly. It's a great starting point. Now, on the topic of listening, you listen to a lot of audiobooks. What are some that you love? What are you listening to right now? So I really love... Okay, I listen to a lot of parenting books. I have to admit that. So I really love strength-based parenting. One that I recently finished is Unconditional Parenting by Alfie Cohn, which I really liked because it actually talks about how positive re like positive compliments and positivity that you're sending your, your kids can sometimes actually have a negative response because it's programming that to do things on a positive or negative consequence versus then learning how to do things based on internal motivation for what they want to actually create. So that was really interesting. And I just finished that about a week or two ago. I love The Outward Mindset by the Arbogen Institute and just changing the perspective of the way that we think. I really like anything that changes my perspective. Even when I'm listening to things that I don't necessarily agree with, I, for some reason, find it very intriguing to understand a different perspective. And I, my whole life, even growing up, whenever I didn't really understand somebody, we had a saying in my home that says, there's only two kinds of people in the world, the ones you love and the ones you don't understand. And so I have this like need to understand people because you notice the people that know the worst things about you are the ones that love you the most because they also understand where you're coming from. So any type of literature, articles, podcasts, anything that can switch my perspective to understand a different type of thinking, I'm a huge fan of. You know, you shared that at Genius Network, that saying, and it really impacted me. I love it so much because it's true. Obviously, I live in the Middle East where a lot of people don't understand other people and don't understand uh, their own people even. And I think it's absolutely true. Yeah. So Melina, I know we are coming up here on time. I do want to ask how people can learn more and get in touch with you. So I have a website, welloiledceo.com. Also, melinaharrison.com. And on either of those, you can download my five hacks for entrepreneurs. I'm on Instagram. I also have a fan page on Facebook, Daily Essential Oil Tips, where I put helpful information on how to use essential oils. Or if you want to text the word oils to 444-999, then I can also give you a PDF and just an overall daily routine of what you could use essential oils for. Totally awesome. I'm really excited. I do want to talk to you about potentially doing an essential oils challenge for our superhuman mastermind because I think it would be really, really cool to have people spend 30 days learning about this stuff. So we will wrap about that offline. But before I give you the thanks that is so due, if people take away one message and they carry it with them for the rest of their lives, what would you hope for that to be? I would hope that it would be they understood that health doesn't have to be complicated. It just needs to be a priority. And if you take a little bit of priority to learn the things that you can implement, then it can be a very simple process that's applied to your daily routine and make a huge impact. That's a really great message to carry with them. Melina Harrison, I always enjoy chatting with you and I look forward to hanging out with you at Genius Network and hopefully doing some cool stuff together with essential oils and our mastermind. So thank you very, very much for coming on the show today. Pleasure was mine. Thank you so much.
All right, super friends, that is all we have for you today. But I hope you guys really enjoyed the show and I hope you learned a ton of actionable information, tips, advice that will help you go out there and overcome the impossible. If you've enjoyed the show, please take a moment to leave us a review on iTunes or Stitcher or drop us a quick little note on the Twitter machine at Go Superhuman. Also, if you have any ideas for anyone out there who you would love to see on the show, we always love to hear your recommendations. You can submit on our website or you can just drop us an email and let us know. That's all for today, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in to the award-winning Superhuman Academy podcast. For more great skills and strategies or for links to any of the resources mentioned in this episode, visit superhuman.blog. While you're at it, please take a moment to share this episode with a friend and leave us a review on iTunes. We'll see you next week.